please pan to the that once in a while so they can follow along. We're having, and I don't know how, I don't know why, but we're having hundreds of views now. <clears throat> so what a joy that is to know. I mean, we went, Bob, we went a year, at least a year, and we felt like we were getting throttled. We were getting blackballed by Facebook or whoever. Uh, <clears throat> Big tech does not like our message, <clears throat> obviously. Um, so we are in the last days, and that's going to produce. <clears throat> Good morning, <clears throat> Emmanuel, Jackie, and, and the guest of honor, Henry. <laughs> Praise God. God, I love that boy. All right, I miss the girls. Years ago, you should. All right, we can. Anybody have an extra outline? I better start making more, hey? Here, I got one, actually. I got one. You need it? Oh, yeah. Here. Oh, okay. Do they need one? Okay, I think he's got one. All right. This is what I didn't want to get on live stream. Okay. Okay, all right. Okay. Many years ago, uh, Carol and I, went to SeaWorld. How many of you have ever been to SeaWorld? Okay. Of course, anything good like that, you see, anything good like that in our country, <clears throat> they blackball it. They made a, a, a documentary called Blackfish or something like that and just talked about how horrible it was for the, the, the whales and Shamu. But <clears throat> let's go before that all happened. Never mind that they're treated like heroes and superstars and, and all the rest of it, and they get to eat all they want and so forth. But <clears throat> it's always amazing to watch those trainers with those massive killer whales, right? <clears throat> and <clears throat> to, 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 to watch them. And uh, <clears throat> that whale is so gracious, I'm thinking, uh, not to put them in eternity with a, just a nudge of their nose, right? <clears throat> you get the feeling they're fed those handfuls of fish just to placate them, keep them in a good mood. And, uh, but, and then you see them as they hang on to the fins and they go up with them and come down with them and so forth. And, I was, and they try to put their arms around them. I think that's kind of how it is to try to explain salvation and grace today. It's such, and, and, and Christ, as far as that goes, notice it says here, uh, it, uh, it says, uh, verse 5, let's start here, so let's, verse 5 of Philippians 2, let this mind, let's read it together, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen? Let me ask you a question. If we were to ask your neighbor, or your family. Is so and so Christ like? Would they say that? Are you Christ like? Now, every once in a while, I come across a rare, precious treasure of a Christian, and they radiate Christ. And I just can't get enough of them. Amen? It's just a thrill to know Christ and to allow Christ to live his life through us and to radiate him to a lost and dying world. Isn't that what it says in verse 15? We're going to get to verse 15, by the way. Let's read it together, verse 15. That you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God. Wait, let's stop there. Notice it didn't say sinless. Amen. Amen. We don't have to be sinless. I mean, we're not going to be sinless this side of glory. We got this old flesh we got to deal with, right? All right. So don't think you got to be sinless, but blameless. In other words, 
I saw you stealing my tires, or I saw your dog go on my lawn, you know, and you didn't clean it up, so forth. Clean it up. Dog makes a mess, clean it up. God's people said, amen. All right. That you may be blameless and harmless. Let's read it together. That you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Amen. So the Lord wants us to shine for Christ, right? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery, verse 6, to be equal with God. Hey, how about this? Verse 7, everyone. But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the arm of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man. <clears throat> so he, uh, <clears throat> he took upon him he took, here's God the Son, the second person of the Trinity who swirled the constellations out there, right? He became a man. And look what it says, verse uh, 8. Let's read it together. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, okay? So that's that humbling and the humiliation part of Christ's ministry. He came to, to that, and, 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 and let me just say, uh, I, uh, I have to say that this, this boy was, was looking at a picture of Christ at a thrift store, through a thrift store window, you know, and uh, he was there, and, and the boy was getting a little teary-eyed, and and a skeptic came by. Hey, do, by the way, don't worry about that noise. That, that's the most beautiful noise in the world. <clears throat> okay. I don't know what, what these people are marching for. Let's murder our babies. Oh, that's great. That's, that's, man, that's a cause I want to get behind. <clears throat> yeah, right. So anyway, <clears throat> by the way, you going to vote this week? I hope you vote wisely. I hope you vote for the person for life and for freedom. You say, what are you? I'm a Christian. First of all, Christian. Constitutional. Conservative. Okay? And I believe that's a biblical proper perspective. Okay? We'll leave it there. It's a stewardship. All right? <clears throat> Christ humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God, let's read verse 9. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, everyone, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Even Hitler's going to bow his knee, right? <laughs> What's that? Mohammed, right? Buddha, Confucius, all of these false teachers, all of these health and wealth guys who, you know, I guarantee you they weren't out there in 105 weather <clears throat> banging on doors. They were just waiting for, they were going by the mailbox, waiting for the money to come in, right? Okay. <clears throat> Christ is what we're about, <clears throat> okay? John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. All of the great writers in the New Testament spoke of Christ. Philip, the Bible says, went down and preached Christ to them. Peter said, You're redeemed by the precious blood of Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other there is none other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Buddha didn't die on the cross for your sins. So this boy was at the thrift store, right? Let me get back to that. He's looking at the picture of Jesus. Here comes a skeptic. 
He said, well, young man, what are you looking at? He says, I'm looking at the picture of Jesus. He says, so the skeptic says, well, young man, there are many Christs. Which Christ do you worship? Well, the little boy was, you know, he was taken back a little bit. <clears throat> he thought, and the guy started walking away. And the boy said, hey, mister. He said, I worship the Christ that rose from the dead. <clears throat> I worship the Christ who was born of a virgin. Buddha wasn't born of a virgin. Muhammad wasn't born of a virgin. I worship the Christ who lived a sinless life. None of them lived a sin. Muhammad certainly didn't live a sinless life. <clears throat> I worship the Christ who died on the cross for my sins. Amen. Pretty quiet in here. Amen. <clears throat> Somebody said, well, I'm a Buddhist. You know what? I shared with Tua. What was the lady's name who came? What? Tui. Tui. I said, oh, you're Buddhist. And she was really precious, I have to tell you. But I, I kindly told her that Buddha didn't die on the cross for your sins. I said, Jesus loves you, hon. He loves you. You know, I just want to let her know that. <clears throat> said it in a kind way. <clears throat> so, I worship the Christ who died on the cross for our sins, shed his precious blood. I worship the Christ who went into that tomb, and I worship the Christ. Don't worry about it, honey. We, we, love, we love that noise. <clears throat> okay? Uh, <clears throat> and if, if you're watching online, we, we like crying babies in our auditorium. <clears throat> There's so, there seem to be so few of them anymore. <clears throat> Um, and I worship the Christ who saved me. Amen? Do you love him this morning? And I worship the Christ who promised me in no uncertain terms numerous times that he's coming back for me. <clears throat> Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In other words, I'm God. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. What is heaven about? Well, it's streets of gold, streets, all of this stuff. No, heaven isn't about stuff. Heaven is about a Savior. A savior who, I mean, it's so much not about stuff that even the light of heaven isn't going to be from the sun, but the sun, S-O-N. I'm going to see the face of Jesus. And I don't care if he's got a little shack in the corner of glory land for me. I'll just be glad to get in the door. Amen? And I'll, I'll, I'll count it a privilege to shine Bert's shoes in heaven <clears throat> and Brother Frank's. I just want to get in and enjoy the fellowship. Now, if he's got more than that, I mean, we talk a lot about crowns. I'm going to get my crowns. Crowns. Right. <laughs> yeah, you go around heaven with like 10 crowns, right? I just want to hear well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's it. And if he wants to throw a crown up there, I'm going to put him right back at his pierced feet. For all he did for me. We talked last week about salvation, didn't we? At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Things in heaven, things on the earth, things under the earth. Everyone, verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Everyone, verse 12. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. <clears throat> 
Very important for us to realize it says, it doesn't say work for your salvation, right? Work out your own salvation. In other words, there's a lot of things that we, we, we personally and internally and practically have to work out. Life is not easy, in case you didn't know that. <clears throat> Carol and I have been going through uh, some transitions of life. Even our dog is going through transitions. Boy, huh. How many hundreds of dollars we had to spend on Molly? We're trying to keep her around before we eat her, you know? <clears throat> just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't know how Beagle tastes. I, you put the ketchup on Beagle? I don't know. Do they taste like chicken? I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know. With the food shortage coming up, maybe I'll get about eight or ten dogs, honey. I don't know. But <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> all right. That's enough of that. Okay. We're not eating Molly. All right. She... <clears throat> I, never mind, I'm not going there. I just, I, I don't even want to think about losing her, you know? 14 years. We, we had her since she was born. Really? 14 years, yeah. She's going strong, pretty good. But she sleeps a lot more, you know? I came in, she talks to me. She talks Beagle, I don't know, you know? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> What's that? What's that? Snoopy. She's a Snoopy, Okay. Snoopy doesn't talk much. He just has these thoughts, right? Okay. God bless the comfort creatures we have. But I'm thankful for the salvation that the Lord Jesus Christ paid for in his precious blood. Amen? Not what these hands have done can save this guilty soul. Not what this toiling flesh has borne can make my spirit whole. Not what I feel or do can give me peace with God. Not all my prayers, my sighs, my tears can bear my awful load. Work alone, thy work alone, O Christ, can ease this weight of sin. Thy blood alone, O Lamb of God, can give me peace within. Our Lord Jesus Christ shed his precious blood for us that we might be saved. And so you say, well, pastor, how do you work this thing out? This, how do you work out the practical aspects of salvation? Next. <clears throat> We have a so great salvation, right? And so uh, the testing, it's a personal workout. It's practical workout. Okay, it's personal. It's your own, okay? I mean, I, I like the terminology, have you received Christ as your personal Savior? I've had somebody actually kind of make fun of that. And I don't know why you'd make fun of it. Jesus didn't just die on the cross for the sins of the world. He died on the cross for the sins of each one of us individually. And if you'd been the only sinner, he'd have gone to that cross for you. I believe that. And so he says, listen, I paid for it back across the page. Just look back across the page there, Philippians 1 and verse 6, everyone. Everyone, Philippians 1, 6, read it with me. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen? So, uh, <clears throat> I had this guy in my church. His name was John Sorcy, honey. You remember John. He was, uh, I was going to say he was Italian, but he wasn't Italian. He was Sicilian. And, of course, he makes a differentiation between Sicilian and Italian. I mean, this guy was very verbal and, and expressive. <clears throat> and he came to church one time <clears throat> with this T-shirt on. He would do the opening exercises, remember, honey? <clears throat> and he had this shirt on, PBP, uh, <clears throat> trying to think, <laughs> G, and, and he had these letters on there, PBP, GNWY, or something like that. I said, John, what is that? Is that like tongues or something? You know? He says, oh, no. No, Pastor. He says, Th those letters stand for this. Please be patient. God is not finished with me yet. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> and then we, he would sing that little chorus. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Amen? God's working on me, but he's working in me. He has begun a good work in me. I mean, I was a wicked sinner, 
and every day I marvel at God's grace to me. I really do. And so he does his work. So it's personal, it's practical, and it's precious. It's, it's, it says, work out your own salvation with what? Fear and trembling. I want you to take a moment. I don't know when we did it, honey, but we went to Niagara Falls. You remember? Janet, we're ready. I want you to see. <clears throat> it's all right. Oh, just, I just would like to sit down and listen to that. <clears throat> I, maybe I'm weird. I like it. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so we went to Niagara Falls. How many have been to Niagara Falls? Okay, Belle, you've been there? You've been, did, did Brother Dennis take you? He took you there. Amen. Every husband ought to take their wife, but if they can. Or at least watch this. This is God's creation. Amen. of salvation illustrated in God's nature and when you go there and you hear the roar you hear the roar the Bible says the Lord on high is mightier than the voice of many waters you to just see that for a moment because we're going on to verse 13 everyone In verse 13 is very important it is a definition a practical working definition verse 13 everybody let's read it together oh let me just repeat the last part of the last verse okay <clears throat> the testing it's his own work he does in us and then he works through us, right? We talked a little bit about that. <clears throat> All right. Verse 13, everyone. This is very important. Please mark it, everyone. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's God's practical definition of grace. Amen? What is grace? Grace is the desire, practical definition, just practical personal definition, the desire and the power to do God's will. <clears throat> right? <clears throat> the desire and the power to do God's will. And when I think of grace, forgive me, but I think about the Niagara, Niagara Falls. Next. <clears throat> I mean, I really do. <clears throat> How? How do we work out salvation in us practically on a day-by-day -day basis? Okay? I'm talking about, you know, waking up and, 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 and going to work or whatever you have to do to get through each day, right? Lord, how can I get through this day? And the answer is by his infinite, marvelous, matchless grace. Not have I gotten, but I received. Grace hath bestowed it since I believe. <clears throat> Boasting excluded. Pride I abase. I'm only a sinner saved by grace. This infinite, marvelous, matchless grace is what... See, but like Paul said, you, you see, I'm not all that I'm supposed to be, right? <clears throat> I'm thankful for revival today. <clears throat> By the grace of God, I am what I am. And so I wrote a note in here. Praise God, I'm not what I was. Amen. Amen. 
And no, I'm not all that I'm not all that I ought to be. <laughs> right? But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and by and by I shall be all that I ought to be by his grace. Let me tell you something. Brother Winfield is all he ought to be now. <clears throat> Amen. Standing before his Savior. And I think about John Wesley and how, you know, John Wesley, you know, him and George Whitfield, they both got kicked out of the church. And they wouldn't even let him in the church, you know. His mom was arrested twice. Uh, the house burned down twice. But one of those times when the house burned down, she had 19 children. Now, that's like a whole classroom, right? Honey, you had many times you had 19, 20 children. I mean, it's hard to keep track of all of them. So she got all the kids out, and all of a sudden she realized John wasn't there. <clears throat> and so she ran in and, and just in the nick of time grabbed his little body. And so his whole life, really, was snatched from the fire by God's amazing, marvelous, infinite, matchless grace. I am so thankful for that grace. I'm thankful for his salvation in Christ. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. <clears throat> and so God, God gives us saving grace. Amen? He gives us serving grace. He gives us living grace. He gives us sustaining grace. And one day, he will give us dying grace. Amen? One day. Got dying grace today? No. But when that moment in time comes, God will give me dying grace. Amen? Don't need dying grace, right? Well, I need to die to myself. Amen? <laughs> I die daily. Need to die to my own self, the old selfish nature. <clears throat> Let me tell you, that, that work that we did yesterday, that, that Bert and Cassandra, we were cleaning out an apartment yesterday, helping Kay out. Let me tell you what. Go, just go give a pat uh, to Cassandra. She went over there all by herself and did a lot of cleaning. <clears throat> Kay was trying to help some people, and they made a mess in there. Thank God we got it cleaned up. <clears throat> so... But, but, but look what it says. <clears throat> Verse uh, uh, 20 of chapter 2. You there? For I have no man like minor who will naturally care for your estate. Everyone, verse 21, right, buddy? For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. Oh, my word. That's convicting, isn't it? Again, everyone. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ. So the Lord Jesus had us on a a little mission yesterday. I think we did pretty good. <clears throat> Through his grace. His grace. That's what it's all about. Saving grace. Serving grace. Sacrificial grace. And one day we're going to be standing before him by his grace. Now once in a while it's good to get a negative attitude. Did you know that? <clears throat> How can a, a negative attitude be? A good thing. It gives us Bible truth. Let me give you, uh, I'm just going to give you these and we're going to go. You, I want to encourage, encourage you to come back tonight. We're going to hear about the flaming pulpit, right? Brother Bob, flaming pulpit. Matthew seven twenty three. So let me talk about the negatives of Jesus. So this first one is a single strong negative. Okay. Jesus, uh, here we have the people coming to Jesus and saying, oh, did we not do many miracles in your name? Did we not, you know, serve you? Blah, blah, blah. And the Lord Jesus is going to say to a lot of those people, I never knew you. Wow. I never knew you. Now that word, never, the root of it is a very strong word. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 
all of these guys with golden toilets and fixtures and three or four planes, not just one. You know, got to have the latest Boeing 757 or whatever. Depart from me, I never knew you. Don't you be that person. You come to Christ today. Are you saved? Do you have assurance of your personal salvation? Come. Receive Christ. He's waiting for you. He's longing for you to come. That brings us to our second negative. John 6.37. Get this now. Don't miss it. He says, All that the Father giveth to me, what? Shall come to me, and him that cometh to me, I will what? I will in no wise cast out. God's people said? Amen. Amen. Now that's a strong double negative. So he says if you come to him by grace through faith and receive him. Okay. And we go back to John chapter 1, right? When we receive Christ... Guess what he says? He says, and grace upon grace upon grace, and grace for grace. Okay? Living grace, dying grace, whatever. Grace grace for that moment. I mean, when I was coming back from California and that crazy nut came up off that ramp and smashed into me, you know what he gave me? Auto collision grace. Did you know that? <laughs> Amen? Mm -mm. Now, I wouldn't have wished for that moment at all. But God allowed me to go through it for a reason. And I'm grateful. I think he just wanted to show me how he could protect me in a time of a screaming crisis. And he came in at that moment. I didn't have time to say, Oh, thou God of Jeroboam, Rehoboam, and all the fat and bone butters. Yeah, I didn't have time for that. I had time for one word. Lord! And he came down and enveloped me. And that side airbag went off. Wow. Now, that's the only wreck I've ever had, really. In... Whatever, 50-something years of driving. The Lord allowed me. He says, I will in no wise cast you out. Strong double. And then the third one, I like even more. A song was written about it. Hebrews 13, 5. He says, I will never, what? Leave thee nor forsake thee. And that's a strong triple negative. Uda ume is the root of that word never. And he actually wrote a song about, <clears throat> I will never, no, never, no, never uh, forsake thee nor leave thee alone. Right? I'm thankful for those ne negatives of Jesus. The stern warning to make sure about our salvation. Right? Boy, you don't want to get to that point. And he says, I never knew you. Depart from me. Oh, what a sad time that will be for all of those people who were in so-called Christian churches and did service for God. They lit candles and, and maybe they were an altar boy or maybe they were a, 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 a priest or a nun or they were very religious but lost. Religion doesn't save. Jesus saves. <clears throat> Come to him. He's waiting for you. Come now, not tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. And so, uh, desire and power, work out. You got beliefs. What you're going to be able to believe, believe about the Bible? Physical issues. When we have afflictions and suffering, how are we going to handle? We're going to get bitter at God? I think of our Juanita and all she went through. I was thinking about her this morning as I came down Grant and I thought, 
Oh, it would be so precious to have her, so hard for her just to get dressed and come to God's house in so much pain and suffering. And I realized, that's why the Lord took her. <laughs> he looked down and he said, you suffered so much, honey. Why don't you come up? I got a new body for you. No more pain. No more pain, Brother Brian. And take care of you. Dave, trust Dave made it up there okay. We got, we got a whole corner of glory land with Temple Baptist people now. <laughs> You're going to meet Brother Bowler? <laughs> I mean, that's a, happy, that's a happy corner in heaven, amen? The Temple Baptist corner. Physical issues, family issues, financial issues. Are you going to honor God? Look, I'm not trying to fundraise here. I'm trying to get God's blessing in your life. Give him the first fruits. He'll bless the rest. So much better than you're hoarding all of it. Right? So we work out salvation by his marvelous, infinite, matchless, wonderful grace. And then we go forth. Notice it says in verse uh, 16. Next. Temptation. Next. The tongue, yeah, we could talk a lot about that, right? All right. <clears throat> Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Amen. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister what? Grace unto the hearers. So we need to watch our mind. Amen. We need to watch our mouth. Amen. And we need to watch our members. Romans 6. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin. Where do your feet take you? What do your hands do? What are you doing with those eyes? What are you doing with them? Are you thankful for your sight this morning? And you're hearing. What are you doing with your ears? Glorify God in your body. It belongs to Him. Don't murmur. Complain. Next. Quickly. And I share this. The testimony. Be blameless and harmless. How is my testimony? How is your testimony? Holding forth the word of life. Hmm. Let me share this and we'll go. Y'all come back tonight if you can. If you're physically able. I knew of some missionaries many years ago. Their name were Glenn and Winnie Sanders. <clears throat> Missionaries to Romania and Russia. <laughs> you might think it rather strange. Like, you ever heard of Granny Holderman? <clears throat> Granny Holderman went to Haiti in her 60s. And she labored there for, I think, 30 years, in her 90s. Well, this couple... They got saved later in life and they became Christians and they became missionaries in their 70s and 80s and they went to Romania and Russia. Okay? They're both in heaven now. And <clears throat> when this dear man was in a, uh, a, a kind of a, a rustic uh, convenience store in Russia, he handed the lady a tract. Okay? <laughs> And a lady a tract. He happened to have a, a tract in Russian. And, 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 and the, the lady was, you know, in Russia, they're just like, what do you want? <laughs> right? And so <laughs> she looked down and says, what is this? <clears throat> in Russian. I don't know what. I don't know what that is. I'm like, I don't know what that is. All right. 
What is this? And he replied in English. <laughs> he said, Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm. That's what he said to that convenience store clerk in Russia. And believe it or not, the following Sunday, that clerk visited their little church there in eastern Russia. <clears throat> and they said, how she heard. She said, she told the story and added, she said this, if an old man would come across the world from America, and she had to trek. She said, if an old man would come across the world from America and give me this message, he said, it must be very important. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> that morning, that Russian lady received Christ as her Savior and got baptized and joined that church in Russia. Now, folks, never underestimate. I put something out, a message out this week. We can't force people who aren't ready to receive the message. But never underestimate the planting of a seed. <laughs> Amen. And we had a lady last week. When did we? When did we do that? When did we do his? his uh, complex Pfft, months ago months ago yeah February five months ago well I, we happened to give this lady a calendar and she said man that lady she, she was explaining it to me that I look at that calendar every day <clears throat> I thought about how nice you were to give me that calendar and she said I had to come and I I, I I have to be honest with you. I meant to call her, and I didn't get back to her today. The van battery was dead, so I had to go. Are you about Jen, Jen, yeah, Jen Flores. She was here last Sunday. That's what I want to say. Five. So we planted a seed, okay, and she came. She'll be back too. She'll be back. Pray for her. She's going through a hard time right now. And so, how's my testimony before my family, my neighbors, the world? Let's shine for Jesus, shall we? Thank God for those missionaries. They're now in heaven. They've gone to their reward. But there was a lady in a little rustic convenience store in Russia who got a track. Now, you would have never thought that the light of the gospel would have gotten into that little hole in the ground. But that lady got saved. Like in the prisons, right? You'd think, Prison? How can anybody get saved in an old, dark, dark prison? But they do. <laughs> they do. Let's get out there and be lights for Jesus Christ. Amen. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I know there's a lot of things that happen to us. <clears throat> so work it out and bring it out and carry it out for Jesus Christ. Show forth the word of light. Let's stand together. Father in heaven, thank you for this time. <clears throat> What a privilege it is to be in your house. Lord, I, in a, in a halting, stuttering way, tried to get across this wonderful grace that you've poured out upon us. How grateful we are, Lord, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And each one of us, Lord... We've got heartaches and burdens and losses and crosses that we have to bear. Loved ones and friends, precious ones who have gone before us. And we ask and we look up, Lord, and we say, why? Why did you have to take them now? But you did. You had a time. And you have a time for us, too. And so while we wait... For that glorious grand reunion in the sky. Help us to be found faithful. And give us waiting grace, Lord. And while we're waiting, give us serving grace. And if need be, give us sacrificial grace. May we be willing to pour out our lives for you, Lord Jesus. 
As we sing a song of invitation, Lord, I pray that you will touch hearts. It's been a little dry. The invitation's been a little dry, Lord. We need to have you move in our midst. We gather each week, Lord, and cry out to you for revival in our hearts. Move this morning, Lord. There's some folks who need me. There's somebody in this room who needs to be saved and make sure about their salvation. I don't want them to meet you, Lord, and have you say to them, I never knew you. What a heartbreak that would be for any of us here as we preach Christ. And then, Lord, if there's a Christian who really is hanging on to sin and self, I pray that they would let it go and say yes to you, Lord Jesus. There's some tough transitions we have to go through, Lord. Give us grace to go through them. Maybe there's somebody who needs to be baptized, somebody who needs to join with us. You, Holy Spirit, you touch the hearts, the specific hearts who are here. Because that's what you do. You speak to our hearts. And then, Lord, you speak through our hearts to someone else. Do it, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat>